growing up, the words come to the table were very invitational for us as a family. We never exactly knew who would be at the table when those words came out of my mom's mouth. But there was always food and invitation that came. We lived in Germany. Often it was my dad bringing people that he had been counseling up until the dinner hour to eat with us. In middle school and and elementary school, it was often my brother's best friend, Shawin, who's now a missionary in Africa because his mom worked an hour and a half away. In high school, when we lived in Japan, it was often airmen who my parents had adopted, and miraculously, when they heard those words, come to the table, they would fling the door open and have a place set for them. Come to the table is an invitation. No matter where you're at, who you are, it's an invitation to come and eat. This weekend, we begin a new sermon series entitled, I Come, O Savior, to Thy Table. And today, we're going to look at the invitation to the table, to come to the table. And just like with any invitation, we want to look at who's being invited, what it is we're being invited to, and when we're being invited. Those questions kind of are things to look at 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 any invitation that you get. And so we look at Jesus' story to see the initial invitation. And we see that, that Jesus is talking to people at a great banquet, about a great banquet, and he says, come, come. The invitation is there. And so who is it that's been invited to come to this table? Well, in Jesus' story, he begins it with, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. Many people were invited. The people who he wanted to be there, who he wanted to be around. As you think about this great banquet, what does it look like for you in your, in your mind? For me, it's, you know, kind of red carpet, jazz quartet, and you've got all kinds of great food and great company to be with. It's something you want to be at. It's not something that's just kind of thrown together at the last minute and, oh, well, people will come. No, it's, it's this thing that, that is dealt carefully with. In the first century, as people threw great banquets around where Jesus traveled, what they would do is they'd, they'd send out your invitation, say, here it is, this is uh, when it is, And then once everything was ready, they'd send another invitation out. So Jesus, as he's telling the story, is talking about that second invitation that goes out to say, come, for everything is now ready. And what happens when he he goes to the people who are invited, that he wanted to be at that banquet? They come up with excuses. I bought a field. I bought an ox. I got married. These excuses are telling the person, the master, throwing the banquet that, that they just don't care. These are really lame excuses when you get down to the bottom of things. I bought a field. You know what? I, I just happened to, on a whim, buy a field that I haven't seen, and, and during your banquet, I got to go check it out. Can't make it. Sorry. Can't wait. Got to go do it now. I bought an ox, and I don't know if they're healthy or not, so I've got to go check things out right now. Can't wait. Sorry. Got this huge banquet. Not my fault. Can't make it. Or I got married. This person is saying, I got married. I have to start my family right now. Right now. And, and I can't come to your banquet. Sorry. Can't do it. These are not good excuses. These are lame excuses to not come to the table. And these aren't the only excuses we see around us, right? Even today we see that great banquets and great uh, things are, are offered to people and they make excuses not to come. Last year, there was the royal wedding, right? 
huge. And if you were like my wife, you got up to watch all the festivities. And 600 people are invited. It's not a huge, huge guest list. But still, people made excuses. It's my birthday. There's a protest in Arabia. I have to work. Lame excuses that we use all the time. For me in high school, middle school, the dog ate my paper, right? We didn't even have a dog. Still used it. Today, what is it? Uh, Google crashed. I couldn't get to my drive. Excuses are all around us. And we use them to get out of things that we should be doing. Jesus is using these excuses as a demonstration to what people say they can't come to the table. They can't come to Holy Communion. What are some of the excuses we hear? What, uh, I, I didn't quite get my steps in last night, so I've got to go for a walk this morning. I was up late watching the baseball game, so I need that extra hour of sleep. You know what? I just don't feel like going. There's excuses all around us. But the thing we have to remember is that when Jesus is talking to the people, he doesn't just leave it at the excuses. He takes us further into the invitation to come to the table, and and he says, well, who's invited to the table? If the invited guest can't make it, what should we do? Well, you go out, and you pull in. The poor and the lame, the crippled. You pull in everyone. You go to the highways and the hedges. And this hasn't been just the message that Jesus is saying right here, right now. But Jesus' life starts out with this message. In Luke 2, we we hear those angels proclaiming, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For all people. So who is it that's invited to this table? It's everyone. Everyone is invited. And as everyone is invited to the table, it begs the question, well, well, what, what is the table? Have you ever received an invitation to, to something that's kind of ambiguous? Like you just don't know what it is that you're being invited to? Is it a baby shower or a wedding or a, a birthday? Oftentimes those things are spelled out for you, but sometimes you just get a date and time and you have no idea what it is. Jesus doesn't want you to be left in the dark. He wants you to know what it is that you're invited to. When he says, come to the table, it's his table. It's Christ's table. Throughout the book of Luke, we see that Jesus does a lot of his ministry around tables. In fact, in Luke 7, 34, it says the Son of Man has come eating and drinking. He came to sit at tables with people, with all kinds of people. And and as he sits there at the tables, he doesn't, doesn't sit and eat, but he sits and eats and shares stories and shares his life with people. And those stories are all about love and forgiveness. They're about, you know what? You make mistakes. You are forgiven. It's all about, you, you need hope right now. You are loved. And there's a hope for tomorrow. As Jesus is sitting with his disciples on Monday, Thursday— Right before he's arrested, he goes out and he says this as they're sitting around. This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. You see Jesus at these tables as he's eating and drinking with people. He's starting to shift a paradigm. 
Because the people around him thought they knew what things were going to be like when Jesus came. And that didn't include eating and drinking with sinners. That included great banquets and a king who would have it all. Instead, Jesus invites people like you and me to join him at tables, eating and drinking. And part of that table fellowship is understanding that he was coming to die for you and for me. That's exactly what he's telling his disciples here. This cup is poured out for you. It's the new covenant in my blood. You see, Jesus' life, death, empty tomb, his stories and his tables were all about forgiving us. So as his body and blood are poured out, and as Luther says, are under the bread and wine that we receive as we come to the table— He's sharing with us his love and his forgiveness. That invitation to come to the table is for everyone. It's for you and for for me. And it's about Christ's love and forgiveness that he shows us on the cross. Whenever I get an invitation, I always tend to ask the question, why? Why? Why am I getting this invitation? You don't want to be that person that's kind of the oddball at the party that everyone is kind of laughing at, right? You want to know why it is that you are being invited. I read a blog post a while back on a blog called The Art of Manliness. And it was called, How to Invite People to Do Something Without Being Awkward. And the whole post was about how, as a guy, it can be really awkward to invite another guy to, like, a baseball game. The author's whole gist is this. People want to know why you want to do something with them. They want to know why, because they don't just want to be left out in the cold. We all want to know that that people like us are going to be where we are. And so as we look at the invitation to come to the table, we ask that question, why? Why? Why, Jesus? Why us? Well, it's not because we have great stories. It's not because we have great excuses. God knows all of our stories and all of our excuses. And guess what? He loves us in spite of them all. We're invited to the table. Why? Because we are loved and forgiven children of God. Because in spite of all the things that we do and say, God is right there beside us saying, I love you and I forgive you. Not because of what we do, but because of what he has done. And the last thing you you look at when you have an invitation so that you can put it on your calendar is when. When is this that I'm being invited to? When is the party? When is the wedding? When is the dinner? When should I come to the table? And and for that answer, we go back into our story. And, And the servant of Jesus or the servant in the story, and Jesus himself today is telling us, come, for everything is ready now. The table of the Lord is prepared for us now. It's it's not time to make excuses. It's time to know that you are loved and that you are forgiven. It's time to come. Jesus beckons us to come to the table, for everything is now ready. Let's stand and sing about that. Amen?